Hello everybody. Uh, we have been ge getting very often queries regarding the revision strategy for this last 40 days. How to prepare the students are getting confused. So myself Dr. Nikita Nanwani along with Dr. Punit Bojani, we are here to share our tips and tricks with you for the last minute preparation. How should you go with that? So uh, sir, what do you think? What is the main preparation strategy in this last 40 days? Obviously, uh uh, time is very very crucial and we'll also be discussing in our session how we are going to manage what should be the management for your day to day uh, basis but revision uh, strategy how many days to divide Dr. Nikita will, will tell you in some time but according to me the focus should be on maximum MCQs as possible because I think in the last 40 days time you are not going to get time to revise your theory so maximum MCQs as possible of the last 10 to 15 years you can go ahead and just make sure that it's not that you focus only on one MCQ. That if it's an All India, so there's nothing a rule. Uh, All India MCQ can be asked in AIMS. AIMS can come in DNB, DNB can come in NEET. So don't label that this is a DNB MCQ, it can't be asked in NEET. So let's not categorize the MCQ, but uh, you need to know your concepts very, very well and focus as much time as in a day. Majority of the time you should be uh, revising MCQs of all subjects. And as I said, it's amalgamation mixture of your one-liners, image-based MCQs and also clinical case scenarios. Because MCQs would be repeated for sure. Even we have seen in the need when we are going through the papers, session after session, MCQs are being repeated. So it's not that MCQs are not going to be repeated. If the verbatim question is not repeated, then at least the topics are 100% definitely going to be repeated. So verbatim also the MCQs are going to be repeated for sure. So last 15 years MCQs and I repeat of all, All India, AIMS, DNB, uh, NEET exam pattern. So you should focus maximum on these MCQs. That is what I feel should be the strategy. That should be the first strategy. So now we have seen that revision according to sir and MCQs are the most important things. Next we would see that how do we plan out our last 40 days. So the thing is you can divide it into 30 days and 10 days. 30 days you should have your one revision complete that is you can divide it into your eight days the eight short subjects that is skin anesthesia radiology psychiatry orthopedics ophthalmology and fmt these eight subjects you can give one day to each of these subjects then you have remaining 22 days out of the 30 days and you have 11 subjects which are remaining each you have already covered out of the 19 one day each then you have 22 days and 11 subjects. So you can give two days to each of the subjects like your anat, physio, biochem, pathology, pharmacology. So these major subjects you can give two days to each of them. So you have 30 days, one revision completed. Now you have 10 days, 8 days or 7 days whatever are remaining. In this 8, 7 days focus on the topics which you found difficult during those 30 days. In those 30 days make a list of all the topics which you are finding difficult to remember so that you know that during the last time these are volatile topics for me I need to revise this what you can do is in those 30 days whatever tables important stuff you come across you can have a picture of those clicked in your phone all of us carry a phone with us all the time so in the break time or even while you know just before sleep you can go through this you can have a folder in your smartphone of all these topics which you can go through very easily each day before the sleep so this makes your revision very good. You can revise it n number of times. Uh, what do you think, sir, should be the preparation strategy for image-based questions and controversial questions? Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. And one more point just to add that let us not, what she said is absolutely correct. This is how you can 30 days, you can try to finish up one revision. But let's not label our days that today I'll do only anatomy. Because if you read only one subject, you get bored. So I think it's always mix and merge is always good. You start with three subjects that, okay, this four days, I'm going to do anat physio biochemistry. Then you can mix and merge your day. Like first half, half you can read anatomy, come back to physio, then come back to anatomy so that you don't get bored. And I absolutely agree with you that either a mobile phone or on your desk, on your study table, you can uh, write down the important points because there are certain things which are mug up, which where nobody can help you as such and you will have to mug it up. So you and we are very volatile. So when you are revising, you will come to know that, oh, this requires last minute revision or just two to three days before the exam. So if you have written it down or click the photograph, as doctor said, 
and you every day night before going to bed if you keep on uh, looking at those images or if you keep on reading those again and again then that is how you would be able to uh, mug up the difficult concepts uh, coming to image based mcqs also there's a lot of fear in fact we were the ones many many years back i had suggested that image based questions would be coming in the exams and obviously uh, there's lots of way to revise but if your theory concept is strong then according to me any image based mcq you could answer because image based is nothing but a way of asking you your theory part so first you read the four options automatically because the, and they will ask you classical pictures very difficult controversial questions very rarely would be asked so always a classical image a classical specimen in in in, in gross or a classical instrument or as we have shown you so uh, those would be asked to you read the four options and according to me if you know your theory then after looking at the image for some time reading the four options you should be able to get the answers okay and coming to a controversial mcq yes there will always be few controversial mcqs i think let's not dig into it that this is the answer now is the time to focus on majority of the topics so one or two controversial mcqs always there will be there you can even probably say neglect it rather than wasting your time or spending lot of time in just trying to find the answer for one mcq spending the whole day rather than just leave it aside so we saw that sir's opinion that it would be classical images that would be asked that is absolutely correct we have seen that in radiology as well the current aims exam had a question on pneumothorax so the classical images like pneumothorax pneumoperitoneum these are the ones which are frequently asked so let's not go into the rare topics but the frequent ones for those you can go through the standard text or even google images can help you like just google pneumothorax and you would get all the images so google images helps in that aspect and the approach to the image based questions should be always retrospective that is in the exam go from the options to the image never try to analyze the image by yourself like suppose you have a image of chest x ray you have a clinical scenario correct so you would be having various options it's a right pneumothorax left pneumothorax right pleural effusion left pleural effusion so from that at least you can rule out two options by recognizing the pathology whether it is on the right side or the left side so you have ruled out two options and you have two options now whether it's a pleural effusion or a pneumothorax so whenever you can rule out options it's always a good thing to do that so go from the options to the image rather than you know digging your brains into the image itself and then coming to the options that really helps so uh, sir can you throw some light on how to divide the daily schedule for the students in this 40 days yeah so i'll just uh, share with you what i used to do and i really tell all this to all the students all the time there's really no need to be remaining awake the whole night and you know if you plan your day in a proper way this is what would work for most of the students at least in the last 40 days or last uh, 30 to 5 to 40 days i feel you should be studying in 11 to 12 hours in a day okay obviously if you are done very well you can put in slightly less efforts but otherwise 11 to 12 hours is good enough so you don't need to remain awake you can have easily 7 hours of sleep in the night have a good sleep because you also need to remember things so 7 hours of sleep in the night to 7 7 1/2 hours is good enough i'm not telling you to sleep only 4 hours 5 hours and in the afternoon also please make some time for afternoon nap it really helps so you can have a power nap of 25 30, 30 minutes in the afternoon so 7 to 8 hours is your resting time then and we have got 24 hours in a day so the remaining 10 to 12 hours easily you can find in studies like get up at 9 or whatever whether early riser or going to bed late you 3 3 hours sessions you can do take some small breaks so 12 hours of studies 8 hours of sleep that still leaves you with 4 hours of your resting relaxation prayers play time whatsapp time little bit jokes whatever some light or motivation something you want to do so you will get 4 hours for your day to day routine activity washing bathing plus your uh, tv time plus your little bit of facebook whatsapp time and uh, play time and prayer time so according to me 8 hours of sleep 7 plus 1 or 7 and 1/2 plus 1/2 12 hours of studies and 4 hours for the rest of the thing so that would really summarize your 24 hours so this should be your routine for the next 40 days how you do it is up to you but try to follow this that will really help you yeah 12 hours is a really big time if you are getting 12 hours even with all the rest and play it's a really good time to get a good rank 12 hours is a huge time but that does not mean that you keep studying continuously for 12 hours 
you know everybody has a concentration limit maybe you can study for 2 hours Not take sure. a 15 yes. minutes break Absolutely. again get back to 2 hours of study in those 15 minutes break what you can do is you know motivate yourself you know like i used to do in my preparation days I always have a book with me, some motivational book because every time somebody will not come and motivate you. You have to remain self-motivated. So have a book, read keeping something good which motivates you so it gets a boost. Other thing you can do in that break time is you can revise whatever you have read yesterday. Suppose yesterday I read anatomy. So today maybe 10 MCQs, 15 MCQs I can do in those 10 minutes break. So it really really helps. So what's happening is in those 30 days, you are not doing just one revision, but you are doing two revisions in those break time also if you are revising. So that really helps. And so what, what do you think should be the strategy just before the exam? What precautions should students take? Yeah, so again, easier said than done that don't panic or don't uh, be depressed. But yes, you have to keep yourself motivated. Give it your 100%. And this is your, you try your best in this attempt. You put in your 100%. On the day of the exam, uh, we'll come to on the day of the exam what should be done and during how you attempt this. But a few days before, make sure your checklist, whatever documents you're going to carry, your hall ticket, your uh, tickets where you're going to travel, everything is in place. And as we have said already before that, some things you will require to do on the last day, uh, two to three days before, some very important table. So that should be ready. So this, while you are revising, that table should also be getting ready that these are the five, six, ten tables or 15 tables which I'll be doing on the last day. They could be a, a classification, they could be staging of the cancers, they could be some uh, important bodies or whatever uh, some things. So, or one-liners on mnemonic. So that your list should be getting ready. So the last two, three days, you can just focus on that. Correct. So we have seen that this, you know, last 30 to 40 days is the time period when most of the students break down. You know, they get afraid during the revision time. I'm not remembering anything, whatever I've read. So they get afraid. And they start thinking that I would make a next attempt next year. Mm -hmm. But trust me, the same feeling you would have the next, next year as well. Absolutely. I mean, it's not only for the one yes. time. It's a feeling you get before every exam. Even somebody who gets rank 1 is not prepared for the exam. Before going to the exam hall, even rank 1 is anxious. Even in the exam hall, rank 1 is anxious. So everybody goes through the same feeling. The one who sails through this feeling is the one who conquers this war. It's actually a war which you conquer. So sooner or later, you have to do that. Yes, so the sooner you do it, the better it is. You save your time. So that's what it is. And so what about the strategy in the exam hall? I mean, how many questions should be yeah. attempted? So now, uh, because of negative marking, and, I'll, and trust me, friends, our students, I even when we had given our exams, negative marking was there. To be very frank, it's my personal opinion that negative marking is always beneficial and it will really help to distinguish a good student from an average or a fluke student. So don't be afraid. In fact, negative marking will work in your benefit because when there was no negative marking at one mark, so many rankers used to get crowded and, and there used to be so much of crowding. So this negative marking will help uh, with that. So obviously there are two thoughts going on, I'll tell you what's my personal opinion. One school of thought is that attempt all the 300. I don't believe in that at all. Negative marking is with a purpose. So exams, uh, there's no point attempting all the 300. So according to me, so first thing is when you start attempting your paper, initially attempt only what you are 100% sure, obviously. So first you mark only what you're 100% sure. Count, start go from one to 300, count how many have you attempted. And then you come to ones where you know something about it, but you are not very confident and few questions will be where you don't know anything. So according to me, 250 to 260 is a bare minimum because if you attempt around say just 200 to 220 to 230 to 240, not or rarely I would say you would get a good rank. So your first target should be that I should at least, at least, at least attempt 250 on the lower side to 260. A topper or a ranker will be definitely attempting 275, 270 to 75 plus. That's just a rough range, depends on the also the quality of the paper. So according to me, if you have solved 270, be very happy. The 271st MCQ, if you are 100% sure that yes, this has been told to me and this is the answer, then mark that. Otherwise, 270 is, I feel, a good attempt. 275, 280 max. That's what I feel. So, target somewhere, majority of the students, uh, rankers will be 250 plus for sure. 
so your first attempt like when you're going from 1 to 300 if you're crossing 200 that's a very good thing right in the first time itself out of 1 to 300 if you're crossing 200 that is your day you are you're you are going to do very well in your exam then you come back to the ones where there is 50 50 scenario and where you have got slightest or doubt think about it read the option and then try to answer 40 50 and the last uh you what 50 remains us may say if you're very very sure then only attempt that so uh, coming to a straightforward point don't attempt all 300 that's my personal opinion uh 265 to 280 brilliant attempt 275 plus brilliant let's ballpark figure 275 but try to make sure you attempt at least 250 because even if it's 220, 232, 40 uh, wouldn't get you a rank most of the time. Uh, I'm sure I think if you want to add something you it, can add. Yeah, I mean that's absolutely correct. It happened with me as well when I, uh, we had All India PG exam which was, as was the last year 2012 when I appeared for AIPG. Even we had the same uh, funda that is plus 4 and minus 1. Yes. And even I was afraid of negative marking then. So I had attempted 240 questions in the first go. Then I had 60 questions remaining, plus I had the time as well to yes. go through those 60 questions. But the mistake I did was, I did not attempt those 60 questions because I was very afraid to do that of the negative marking. But then if I would have, you know, made a logical guess, it would have definitely helped me. At least 10-15 more you would have 10, got. 10-15 you get right, going more, to like, yes. like 40 to 60 marks, it's a big score. Absolutely. It makes a big difference. So plus 4 is a huge amount, minus 1 is like, you can still bear with it. So questions where you can you know exclude the options. So suppose if you get a question like IOHexol is a. So do not get afraid by reading this question IOHexol is. Even if you have not read about IOHexol any time. Look at the options at least. You have options like it's a low osmolar contrast medium. The iodine particle ratio is 3 to 1. It's an ionic monomer. It's a non-ionic monomer. So even if you have not read anything about IOHexol. If you look at the options. Option C which says it's an ionic monomer, option D which says it's a non-ionic monomer, they are contradicting each other. So obviously either of these has to be the answer. So you might not know what is the iodine particle ratio, what is low osmolar, high osmolar, but you are sure that A and B are not the answers. So you have ruled out two options. You have to select between either C or D. So you can take a guess here even if you don't know. So you get a 50% probability of getting a right answer. So it's a really high probability of getting right. So trust me that even rank 1 does not know all the 300 okay. questions. They even, they take a logical guess. Right. So try to, you know, uh, accumulate all your knowledge, whatever you have read from all the 19 subjects. It seems like it's 19 subjects, but actually it's like one human body which we are reading about. Everything is correlated. So correlate whatever you have read, correct? So for example, if you come across a topic like in radiology, you come across, identify the structure and you have the answer which is a zygous vein. So when you come across such question ozygous vein during your revision, ask yourself, do I know everything about ozygous vein? So go back to anatomy. So radiology, anatomy, pathology, surgery, pharmac, micromedicine, everything is correlated. So you should know everything about that topic when you are solving an MCQ. That is how you should prepare. Plus you have decent updates. Students are afraid of that as well. Yeah. So recent updates, maybe you can read for the PSM from the WHO website, the recent programs. Plus the new drugs, you can get a list from the net very easily. The FDA approved recent drugs, you get a list which is very easily available. In the break time, maybe you can do one drug, two drug and keep revising it. It really helps. So that was about how many questions should you attempt, how should you attempt, correct? The next, the final point we come to is that, you know, uh, IQ is not the thing which really determines your rank in the exam. IQ does not really predict. It's your hard work. More than hard work, it's a smart work for NEET PG. Smart. smart work is important. You do not need to read everything in and out. Concentrate on the most important high yielding topics. This you will get to know only when you read the previous year's MCQs. As Sir rightly said, the previous year's papers are to be solved maximum in this period of time. Sir, do you have any special inputs for the students who are registered with Dr. Mentors? Yeah, so... Uh... For all the registered students or doctor mentors, as you are aware that there are 400 hours of videos. Now, of course, every video is important, but here I'm going to tell you the most important. Like, I'm very sure if, as I said, I study 12 hours in a day, so 6 hours solve MCQs. And remaining 6 hours, even if you see 4 to 5 hours videos, so you will be able to finish 200 hours, 200 to 250 hours of videos will be able to finish. So here in each and every topic what are the most important videos I am just going to tell you and this I am really telling you it will really double or triple your chances of getting a rank. 
सो एनेटॉमी टिप्स एंड ट्रिक्स का डॉक्टर निकिता एब्सोल्युटली मस्ट आई कैन गारंटी वाउच फॉर इट आउट ऑफ फिफ्टीन एम सी क्यूज एट टू टेन विल बी कमिंग फ्रॉम दोज वीडियोज सिमिलरली बायो केमिस्ट्री अगेन डॉक्टर निकिता वीडियोज विच आर टूवर्ड्स द एंड वेरी हाई प्लीज फोकस ऑन दैम फिजियोलॉजी विवेक सर इवन इफ यू गो टू टू सिस्टम्स आर एस सी वी एस मेजोरिटी क्वेश्चन वुड बी कमिंग फ्रॉम दैम पी एस एम एस शी सैड वी हैव अ स्पेशल स्टडी मटीरियल so you can go what is dr satish mandel has taken special efforts and a new pdf has been created you download the study material what's the difference between the old park and the new park so that pdf material if you download and you mug it up definitely five to six questions are going to come so for psm you bio statistics the first five to six videos you can expect four to five mcqs and towards the end the recent mcqs and the recently asked images mcqs and the newer advances those are very very important and you can surely expect 6 to 7 questions from this starting 5 videos in the last 4 5 videos and the new pdf material uh, coming to pathology again general pathology will be the major chunk so dr sunil new videos what you uploaded fantastic and they are really really very helpful to the students so cell injury inflammation so dr sunil videos please master them you will really do very well forensic medicine again the recent advances video you need to go through pharmac we have already added new videos what she was telling so there are videos about the new drugs so new drugs videos there are two videos so please go through that that will help you because again questions for sure every year on new drugs come obgy obviously the videos you need to master but again towards the end i have added the recent advances and the image based mcqs and the new mcqs videos very likely questions will be coming from that medicine what new videos you've added in abg pulmonary function test those are very very important because abg is a confusing topic and mcqs every year come in that topic for sure so master uh, those videos very well and uh, in orthopedics again dr nikita image with mcq you can expect around 2 to 3 mcqs from that also and short subjects really don't even waste time reading any books the short subject videos ent ophthalmology radiology and your forensic medicine peaks the videos are more than enough to get you all the mcqs correct so i think for the registered students of dr mentors even if in this last uh, 40 days you finish off these many videos what i have told you it will really really boost your chance of getting a very good rank and obviously if you have any further doubts or any other queries or any other motivation you know that we are just a whatsapp message away or just an email message away uh, i thank all of you for watching this video and i thank also dr nikita for joining us for this session and we would uh, wish all of you best of luck and i'm sure you will all of you will do really very very well Yes. Thank you. Thank you.